Have you ever created a subsummary report with lots of records and had the subsummary grouping break across a page boundary? The subsummary contents don't repeat, so it's difficult to tell what's being summarized. So you end up flipping back and forth between the pages to see what the summary contents are. Let's show you an example because that may not make as much sense as I think it does. So let's go in here and run a standard report. Now before we run that, you'll see that we have a bunch of records in here, just super widgets and widgets. They've got quantities and dates. Nothing special, real simple because I want to distill this technique down to the very basics so you can understand it better and then apply it to your unique solution. So we'll run this standard report and there's a little message here telling you what it's about. And you can see that we have super widget Scroll down here, now it breaks with a new subsummary grouping to widget, and then they don't quite finish here. So on the next page, you'll see that we have the title of the report, but nothing that says that these are widgets. It's hard to tell what's going on. What is this summarizing? What's this the detail from? You have to come back to this page and go, oh, it's a widget, okay. And maybe there's additional information here, you know, uh, some totals, some things like that. And you go, oh, what's a total of that? You know, it, ju it just gets confusing and it can be solved fairly easily. Now, before we go ahead and show you how to do it, let's demonstrate the working method here. So that's this button right here, report conditional. Now, these scripts aren't very complex. So I'm not even going to show them. They basically go to the layout, sort it, and display it. In fact, if we go into layout mode real quick, we'll see that we have the standard report, which is simply just a sub-summary by product, and we have a body part. Now the report conditional, which we're about to show you, is exactly the same parts, but it has an extra field up here called header, which we'll look into. And then we also have this hidden fields. It's the same as the previous layout with the header calculation field, but then it's got these fields that really uh, help you to understand how the technique works. So we'll come in here and run this again, the report conditional, and you see it looks exactly the same, right, super widget then widget, but when we get to the next page, at the top you'll see it says widget continued. That's so you know that these are widgets also. So that's a very nice thing to make it easier to read the report, and it's not that difficult to do. We'll go into manage database and take a look at what we need here. The first thing you need is a record number field. It's a simple calculation that says get record number, number result, and the storage options are do not store because if you don't make it an unstored, you see right there unstored, what will happen is when you exit manage database, that value will stay the same on every single record as it was when you were in manage database or just exiting. And you don't want that because what happens is the record number refers to really this value up here. In other words, it's the relative number for the order of the record. So you might change the found set by doing a find. You might sort the records and change that record number. Well, you want this calculation to update appropriately. So whatever order the records are in, it numbers them from one to whatever. If you change it, well, there'll probably be a different record number one a different record number two because that value is relative to the order inside the current found set. So once you get that in there, your next step is to create the record min. It's a real simple summary field that says get me the minimum of the record number. Now you'll see how that works. I mean you understand how it works. I mean it gets you the minimum value of the record number, but how we use it is really the key to, to understanding this. And the way we use it is we use it inside this header. That's the calculation I showed you that displays either the product continued or not. And what we do is we compare the record number and see if it's equal or not equal to the get summary. Now, if you haven't worked with get summary, this allows you to put the value of a summary field into a calculation field. Now, you can do that simply by mentioning record min. You don't have to use get summary. But when you involve get summary in this you can break it just like you would a sub summary so this is great for doing uh, you know division maybe you want to divide at the sub summary level and you want to get the value not of all the records which is what just record min would get you or the minimum of that but you want to get it by product so let's take a look at what this looks like there's a field in here that doesn't isn't required what I've taken is I've taken that get summary up here and 
deconstructed or, or isolated into its own calculation. So it's it's really only needed up here, but I use it here for demonstration purposes. You'll see it says this is only used for demonstration purposes. So where we use it is in here, the report conditional heading. It's exactly the same as the report conditional, but the hidden fields are shown. So when you look at it, you'll see that here's the record number, one, two, three, just like I said. It just numbers them in chronological order. But then you see the minimum is 11111. OK, that's the minimum. That's what the summary field will give you. But here's where the get summary comes in handy. You'll see that now it's 22 is the minimum for this grouping. That's the key how the get summary works. It works based on the same thing as the subsummary. Like if you took a summary field and put it into a subsummary part, it would be context sensitive and know that it was in there and summarize not all the records, but summarize just what's in that grouping. Now, when you put it in a calculation field, you lose all that context sensitivity. And so what you need is the get summary function. And now watch what happens to the get summary function on the next page. Remember, it's 22, 22 here, 23, 22. We go to the next page. You'll see now it's still 22 is all the way down, but the first one on this page is 26. That means that on this page right here, 26 does not equal 22, right? Over here it equals each other, over here it equals each other, but not over here. And that's why this appears because they don't equal each other. So let's take another look at that. We'll go into Manage Database. You see what I've done is said when it doesn't equal each other, then display this information, which is a return character of the pill crow, the product name, and the word continued. And so that simply goes right inside here. When you take a look in layout mode, we'll go into view layout mode. Just right there, we'll put it right there, and that little return puts it down on the next line. You don't have to do it exactly that way, that's just the way I chose to display it here. So now you've got a conditional header. Now you could do a conditional footer using the maximum summary field and get the same results if you want something conditional in the footer part.